So welcome and thank you for coming. Uh, today we are going to be experiencing the artwork of DeMarcus Smith. DeMarcus is a 2010 alumni of our art and design program. He focused on graphic design here. Um, he is a Flint native who has lived in this area. He has attended Mott. He went on to U of M Flint to complete his bachelor's studies there. And as you can see by the work on the walls, he is incredibly talented. So we are lucky to have him back with us today. So um, the work that we're gonna be looking at, Parks and Roses, is comprised of a number of pieces that explore the black um, diaspora through printed digital illustrations referenced from photographs by Gordon Parks, which I'm sure Mr. Smith will be explaining a little bit more to us. So, and it's looking at the alternate view of the struggles um, some choose to ignore or dismiss. So DeMarcus, thank you so much for being here today and let's give him a warm round of applause. Thank you uh, all for coming today. Um, first and foremost, I wanna thank God for blessing me with this opportunity, um, blessing us with this day. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside today. Um, I want to thank my community college for having me as a part of their centennial celebration. Um, I would like to thank the visual arts and design program and Jim for extending the invitation. Um, there are plenty of talented students who have come through these halls, and um, I'm just blessed and humbled that I was uh, asked to be one of the featured artists. And most importantly, I would like to thank all of you for coming to share your time with me, um, because you could have been anywhere doing anything, but you chose to be here with me, so I appreciate that, and thank you so much. Um, my time here at Mott was amazing. Um, I learned to create an array of different things. Um, I learned to uh, communicate uh, in a visual way. And I discovered uh, my love for canvas painting here. Um, but what I remember most about my time here um, was the way that, I'm sorry, that um, my visual arts and design family showed up for me uh, during one of the hardest periods of my life. Um, on April 26, 2010, my sister was uh, shot and killed, and it was a couple months before I graduated, and it really like shook me real hard. And uh, I don't remember a lot about that time, but what I do remember um, when I was walking through the church and uh, Jim, Brian, and uh, a lot of my other faculty members that were here while I was a student here showed up for me. And I really, really appreciate them for that. And I can't thank them enough for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and I, I can't thank them enough for being there for me and my family in that way. But um, after I graduated from MCC, I transitioned to the University of Michigan Flint and uh, enrolled in their visual communications program. And it was there uh, I had the pleasure of uh, taking a comics course, an intro to comics class with uh, Professor Ryan Clater, who is an a awesome professor. And um, I thought I loved comics, but he loves comics. Like, he is, like, obsessed with comics. And uh, he's a wonderful instructor. He's very thorough. So if you happen to have the opportunity to take a course with him, like, please do so. Um, and. Uh, He's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to creating comics, and it was just one of the best experiences that I've had. Um, and it was there while I was um, during that, that course that this little guy standing to my right, right here, was created. 
um, and his name is Ray. Um, my middle name is Raymond, and he's a, sort of an extension of me. And it was during that time that um, I, uh, he was created out of uh, the trauma that I was dealing with, um, you know, from my sister passing. And he was the focal point of my assignments during the course. And I used him as a way to visually talk about um, the pain that I was dealing with. And I used it like as a, a therapeutic way to ex explain my thoughts and my emotions and talk about things that I had never talked about before. Um, and it was also at U of M um, that my love for painting turned into a passion. I started painting more and developing the pointillism technique uh, that is featured in a lot of my work. Um, the portraits you see behind me are all original works um, created using a hyper stippling technique uh, with acrylics. Uh, and I started this series of portraits while I was at U of M um, because uh, I, I wanted to uh, shed light on individuals who inspired me in many different ways, some of whom I've had personal relationships with, uh, and some I just have a personal connection to, um, my family, friends, athletes, musicians, artists, uh, individuals who have fueled my creativity uh, through their actions and their character, and individuals I wanted to give flowers to for inspiring me. I have a collection of about 50 of these, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to exhibiting those in the future. So uh, if there's like any representatives of Applewood <laughs> that's like sitting in here that might wanna you know, talk about maybe me presenting those there, that would be awesome. Um, just a little tidbit I'm throwing out there. <laughs> but um, I'm really excited about the feedback that I've been receiving from these new illustrations that I've been doing. Um, uh, I've been wanting to create a graphic novel um, since I, create, uh, I, I took that comics class and um, where we explored like uh, that particular genre of comics. And a graphic novel, uh, for those that don't know, uh, is a bit more of a, like a traditional book, but just in illustrated form. Um, and I have two favorites, uh, one being The Watchmen, which was uh, turned into a movie and a popular HBO series. And the other uh, is called Blankets by Craig Thompson. Um, and in it, he uh, talks about his time like, going through puberty and dealing with uh, his Christianity and different things he was exploring while he was growing up um, in Michigan, actually. Um, and I loved it because of the way that it was illustrated. And he used a variety of illustrative ways to detail and convey a range of emotions throughout the book that really stuck with me. And I wasn't quite, uh, I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to, uh, um, my illustrations to look visually and my novel to look. So I have been experimenting with some illustrations and um, I feel like the feedback I've been getting is the same sort of feel that I felt when I was reading Blankets for the first time. So um, I've been really, really feeling really positive about that. And um, the Gordon Parks aspect of this whole series um, came into play when I was commissioned to paint a piece for uh, a doctor who works for MSU. And she wanted me to uh, paint a Gordon Parks piece. And it was an iconic piece called A Harlem Scene. And it's of two young boys like staring down the street uh, in a perspective angle. And like all the buildings are kind of lined up down the street next to them and it's in black and white. And I didn't even want to do the piece because I hate painting architecture. Like it like takes forever to stipple that stuff. So I was just like, I was trying to convince her to do something else. I was like, hey, you don't want to like do some, one of these other, you know, images I kind of came up with. But she was really dead set on that. Um, but it ended up turning out great and I'm really glad that I did it. Um, but what happened was during that, uh, I started to uh, explore more of his photography 
and um, some some of Mr. Park's other images started to resonate with me, um, and I saw myself in a lot of the imagery, um, how I used to play outside with my cousins, um, with pop-up guns, and we make up imaginary games and do different things like that. Um, I remember a lot of people that I knew growing up having a piece of furniture, like which is in a piece in a far right corner back there, that ugly piece of furniture that the young man is sitting on back there. Um, like I know a lot of people who had like ugly furniture like that, so that like really resonated with me. Um, and actually, like the first house that I moved into, like me and my roommate, like we had a two seat uh, couch that was red and it had that same ugly print on it. <laughs> and I hated it, but it was, you know, it was all we had and we made it work. So it was just little things like that that resonated with me and um, it moved me to reimagine the photos, um, you know, in a way that related to me personally and uh, spoke to me visually and spoke to my message of making a way for yourself and uh, making your dream and just giving flowers to those who deserve them. Um, and to the students uh, who have come in today, I just wanna say, um, just be consistent, um, continue to work hard at whatever it is that you're doing, be passionate about it. Um, don't get caught up in like this instant coffee world that we kind of live in, because I know we kind of get caught up in the social media and you know what everybody else is doing and you know we get on that and we like oh you know i wish i was doing this and i was doing that but i promise you if you continue to work hard and just plug away and plug away at what it is you're doing and and be good and be kind and to people like good things will happen to you and i'm i'm proof of that um and i will say uh too like I know we're all trying to make a, a buck. Money is, you know, the goal for us to be successful. But don't let money be your motivating factor. Because if you do, like, eventually that'll kill your creative spirit. So um, just wanted to say that. Like I said, I appreciate you guys coming out, sharing your time with me. So I'll open up the floor to any questions anybody may have. Um, and thank you very much. <laughs> Could you uh, elaborate on uh, Gordon Parks and who he is and how he inspired you? Uh, so uh, Gordon Parks is uh, an African-American photographer um, who became popular um, in the 50s and 60s uh, shooting for Time Magazine. I, I believe he was actually uh, the first African-American photographer for, who shot for Time Magazine. and. Um, Mainly, most of his work uh, was shot um, in his hometown and throughout the South, um, dealing with uh, the segregated South and civil rights history. And he also actually did a lot of fashion work for um, Ebony and a lot of the other fashion magazines throughout the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, and like I said, I, I really hadn't even dived into his work um, up until this point. Um, it wasn't until I was commissioned for that piece that I really started to explore and dive in, uh, more into his work, and it started to just inspire me more and more. So, and I started working on a collection of of illustrations uh, based on his work. So um, I have a few more actually that I want to display and put together. But so this was just like a little little sprinkle of you know, little nuggets I just wanted to kind of give and, and see what kind of reaction I, I get from those, so. And because we are live streaming this, I will come around and bring the mic to you. Otherwise, our friends who are watching won't be able to hear that, so. Thank you. Um, so you talked about how Ray was kind of like, um, like a personal character that you drew based off how you were feeling while you were going through grief. This piece that you did behind you, what does it mean? Because Ray just seems to kind of be in this state of bliss or just kind of like relaxed in the environment. I just kind of want to know what you were feeling when you created that. Well, um, my uh, running theme like through a lot of my work is making your dream. 
like I said, to, to make a way for yourself. So, um, like, in that, during that time, um, like, I, like, I was just kind of in a state of just, you know, lost in my thoughts all the time. So, um, this was just kind of sort of me, sort of kind of displaying him in a way, just, but being in a, a, a more peaceful place. And this was just in reference to um, one of the Snoopy photos, because I really liked the peanuts. And I was just like, wanted to reimagine him like in some of those different scenarios. And um, the reason I, I did the house yellow instead of red was because um, when we, me and my mom, we first moved um, to the north side, um, our first house was yellow. And it just reminded me of that. So just kind of use that as a reference. If I can kind of follow up on that, yes. Marcus, you know, we were talking about, I mean, the Charles Schultz influence, yes. but you were also talking to me a little bit how Calvin and Hobbes plays in to that too, but why Schultz? Why was Peanuts something that you were drawn to? Um, well, like I said, I was trying to uh, figure out a way to reintroduce Ray and my character in a different way, and I had been working on these illustrations, and... Um, trying to figure out a way to kind of illustrate a novel. So um, like just, I was just drawn to like going back to my childhood, like the things that like I used to love back, back, back then, the Peanuts characters, the Calvin and Hobbes, the comics that I used to read in the newspaper every day. Um, so just different things like that. Um, you said you had a lot of uh, portraiture that you did for pointillism. Mm -hmm. How did you select, because you have 50, so how did yes. you select the few that you put it's, up here? It's been a running process, like a fluid process. Like I've been like adding, subtracting people. Um, but it was really just sort of based off, like I said, just um, just people who I, some I have a personal connection to, my family, my friends, um, and just people who I feel as though I have a connection to like like Kobe. Um, he was my favorite basketball player, um, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Um, and like I grew up like you know, he came into the NBA like when I was coming out of high school. So I just was like watched his whole career, followed his whole career, and he was like I hated Jordan. Like so he was like my Jordan to <laughs> like to me like cuz I'm a Laker fan so I didn't really care for the Bulls. Like I I like I love Jordan like no disrespect to him like you know what he did but like you know the Lakers are everything to me so um and even um my friend here um Oakland Mixon um who um he passed away suddenly uh, a couple years ago from COVID and um he just inspired me uh, because uh, he was the founder of Good Boy Clothing, um, which is downtown, right across from Blackstones. And um, he was just one of the first, you know, black entrepreneurs uh, who really, like, showed me that, you know, you can really make a way for yourself here um, by just being in Flint. Because, you know, a lot of people feel like you need to leave Flint to, to be, you know, something or to make a way for yourself. And I don't think that, you know, you don't necessarily have to do that. So I uh, appreciated him for always, um, always giving back to the community. Like he gave his time uh, to a lot of different things in the community and he inspired me in that way very much so. Um, and as well as uh, like Virgil Abloh, obviously I didn't know him personally, um, but he was the first African American to head a design house um, when he uh, was the head of uh, Louis Vuitton. Um, and he unfortunately passed away suddenly last year too. So it's just unfortunate, you know, we've been losing a lot of our great creative minds and, you know, just people, you know, like I said, they inspire me in that way and I wanted to celebrate them, so. Hey. Hi, how you doing? I would like to know your perspective between digital and traditional art. Um, what kind of mindset you have when you're working on a computer versus on an actual traditional canvas? That's a good question. <laughs> um, honestly, uh, it, when I first started doing these illustrations, it was, it was hard 
because I wanted to create them like my paintings and I found it difficult like layering and doing the different things that I do like on the canvas so like it, like I said it was difficult for me to sort of figure out how I wanted them to look so what I did was just sort of go back to my traditional illustrative roots I remember like they taught us uh, light dark mid-tones so I just tried to start working you know with my colors in that way like and not get too complicated and like that's what these are the results <laughs> so like it, I don't necessarily like I don't you know can't explain like how it works in my mind but like yeah, it just <laughs> sort of came out that way so so with the Kobe piece yes. what because you have three pieces mm -hmm. dedicated to Kobe what came first um, the portrait actually and then I was uh, I did a there was like sort of this thing when I, I believe he passed away on like August 26th or something like that. And I, was, I just wanted to do something to celebrate him. So I had like created my own little thing. I had called it Mamba Day. So like I did the portrait and I was like selling some prints of the portrait. And then I had um, did like the couple illustrations to go along with the portrait. And I also like downsized those and created like a, a basketball card as well. Um, just to kind of do some different things so like and I actually did some of the stippling in this piece here like to create the the lighting and the the what is it the the confetti and all of those different types of things so that kind of actually did work out pretty good for that piece yes hi, hi. um you're uh, stipple technique is beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, but it makes my hands hurt. How, I mean, how, lo how long were your sessions when you did these? And oh. Did you do paint in a pen or on a brush? Or? No, I actually use um, the little bottles of fabric paint like that you get from Michaels. Like, so yeah, I just hold those, squeeze them, and yeah, dab it out. Um, but it usually takes, I usually try to work um, at least two, three hours out of the day, um, like consistently, then I'll take a little break and then I'll get back at it. So, um, and I've, 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 I've been terrible at like documenting and logging how much time it takes like in total. And I've been trying to do that like on the back, like I'll write out how many hours like I work, but like I said, I don't do it every day. So, but um, probably, I, w I would say like a good 30 to 40 hours though, yeah, with, with each, each of those, yes. Hi, um, with your two different styles of artwork, what advice would you give like the beginner artist of like how you narrowed in on which ones you like felt were the best for your style? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I guess I, like when I, while I was here, um, that was one thing I appreciated about MCC was that uh, they taught you a lot of different ways to create. Um, and eventually there were certain things that I gravitated to. Like I really loved um, my illustration class with, that I had with uh, Ala. Um, I know she's not here anymore. Um, I can't pronounce her name, so I don't want to mess it up. Um, <laughs> but um, I really loved that class. And um, I loved my class with Brian Ligeblad here. Is that how you pronounce it? Um, okay, I did. Okay, I didn't want to kill that. But um, like, and um, he was like our um, shop instructor. So um, I just like even learned to like look at things in a different way um, in that regard. So I feel like if you you know dive into some different. Um, some different techniques, like you'll eventually find your niche and like you'll eventually start to understand like, or you know, notice what it is that you love, so. I, I would love to know a little bit more about the flowers and the petal motif through your work. Where did that start and why did you continue to put that in your work? 
Um, okay, great question. Um, I was talking to Jim about that. Um, so it's kind of twofold. Um, like I said, I, I, I wanted to celebrate um, like individuals who inspire me and you know, people always talk about giving people their flowers um, while they're here. So um, that was like a way for me to like sort of like speak that visually throughout my work. Um, and also um, sort of like a pop culture reference because um, I love the movie Coming to America. And like in the movie, like they always sprinkled the flowers around like to symbolize that they were royalty. So, um, you know, I always want the people who view my work um, to feel like, you know, they're royalty because I do feel like everybody is royalty in, in their own way. So it's just a way to, to speak that visually through my work. So I just kind of always wanted to keep that consistent. All the way in the back. But. Hi. Hello. So I was just wondering, you're doing a good job speaking. Have you ever thought about um, instructing classes or giving little workshops, teaching um, your techniques? That actually has been broached to me a few times. Um, so yeah, maybe something I need to like look into uh, in the future, but I wouldn't mind doing something like that, but definitely. But thank you so much, I appreciate the compliment. Anyone else with questions? So, we got oh, one more, right? There's no stupid <laughs> question. <laughs> Is um, so I see the different frames up there. Yes. Is there a meaning behind the reason you gave the frames, or was that what just you had lying around? Kind of, sort of, yes okay. and no. Um, like I said, I have 50 of these, and it, like uh, some of them, like obviously are color coordinated with like like I said I love the Lakers so I wanted to do something with um the the purple motif there. Um this one um I just wanted to just to, to frame and make my friend look as, as as regal as possible. Um but I do have some others like like some uh color choices that I want to make with some of the other ones because I just didn't want it to just be black and white and be bland. So um like I said and and, and my goal is to have it at Applewood uh, if anybody's listening. Um, so like that way, like um, like my vision is to like you know have people come there, it's like because their grounds are beautiful. Um, if you've never been to Applewood or if you've been there, like you would know, um, they have a beautiful uh, flower garden. So like my dream would be like to have the portraits kind of throughout the grounds, and you know just to kind of amplify the the space like with some color and and not have it bland. So yeah. Yes. So who is this person on the end? I've just been kind of wondering, even since we walked in and muted as a class, I still didn't know who this person on the yeah, end somebody was. Somebody asked me that earlier. So um, that is Huey Newton. Um, he is the founder of the Black Panthers. Um, and that's why he got kind of the half panther on top of his head. And uh, the reason, like, I obviously selected him for this show was, um, you know, obviously, this month is Black History Month, and it was funny that, like, uh, as I was doing these illustrations, like, I wasn't even thinking about that, but it just so happened that the work just sort of coincided with the fact that it was Black History Month, and it all just kind of came together, so um, he was just, you know, I was like, he was laying around, and actually, this is the first time I've actually ever shown this piece, um, so I was just like, you know, might as well get it framed and show him, so. He worked out. It was perfect for the for the for the time. <laughs> Since they're point pointillism, yes. how long does it take for you to do one portrait? Or depending on the size, I'm assuming, of course. Um, but these in particular, um, like I had um answered the Miss <laughs> I'm sorry, what's your name? Nikki, I had answered her earlier. Um but um about thirty to forty hours depending on the size of the piece, like I said, these probably about 30 to 40, but I did a, um, the bigger piece that I was commissioned for um, uh, of the Gordon Parks piece. That took me like, uh, let me see. I, I would like to say like a month, 
but because of the architecture in it and I just had to do a lot of layering to like get the details in it so yeah it just really kind of varies depending on the size like so yeah my, my wrist was like really <laughs> yeah after that one but you know it's worth it like I love the results I love the reaction like I said that I get from from people when they see it uh, especially up close because a lot of the time people see my work like through Instagram and through my website and they don't really get to actually get up close and see like all of the different little color choices that I make to kind of bring out some of the colors that you might see from afar so thank you. Now you mentioned that you have like you dedicate some time each day yes to your art practice yes can yeah. you talk a little bit about that discipline that's needed for that? Um, I developed that here actually um, that's why I, again I love my time at MCC um, this is one of the best pro, like visual arts programs um, and there's just time spent long hours and that used to be the uh, was, was that the computer lab back there like next to the um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah like long long hours doing projects and you know just just my love for art and uh, you know just wanting to um, just my love for for creating just so just that's just what I do every day <laughs> and I, like I said I feel like if if you have a passion for something um, you know I always say um, you, you'll figure out what it is that you want to do in life when you realize like when you figure out what it is that you do want to do when you get up every day and you do that every day and you wouldn't get paid for it that's what you need to be doing well that's what I feel like you know that was what someone kind of explained to me so I feel like if you can figure that out then everything else will kind of fall into place so. how do you sustain through the struggle in the process of building that um, passion strength with your monetary expenses in life? Yeah, that, <laughs> it's definitely a struggle as well. Um, fortunately, um, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed enough to have a good job um, that provides me um, with the opportunity to uh, be able to take some time off when need be. And like I said, I, I try not to to be a slave to that. Um, I know, you know, I, I do work a lot of overtime, um, but I do try to make sure that um, I dedicate at least an hour or two every day um, to doing this. And, uh, you know, if not, you know, I wouldn't even, you know, be here. So um, it's just, just, it's like I said, it's hard uh, because, you know, things don't necessarily work out in ways that you want them to. Like I said, I've, I've, there's been plenty of times where I've created things and put them out online and nobody really purchased them. And, you know, I felt discouraged about it and, you know, things of that nature. But like I was saying earlier, you know, just just, just keep plugging away because it's, 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 it's not the end of the world, you know, when you don't necessarily sell something all the time. Um, but because there's somebody out there watching and paying attention to what you're doing and somebody is definitely paying attention to the work that you're putting in and eventually you'll break through and you know things will start to turn around so thank you for that encouragement thank you hi um Hello. i wanted to piggyback off of an earlier question mm -hmm. about frames yes and first of all i love like the variation that you have in them thank and you. it makes the work pop a lot more but I wanted to ask, like, what is your philosophy, I suppose, on framing? And, like, one of the, like, I always struggle with to frame or not to frame. And as I look around, I see that you, you've also made this choice. Uh, we like did. kind of the thought that goes into that. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I, I believe me and Jim, I kind of touched on that when we were hanging um, the pieces. And uh, honestly, I hate frames. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... Uh, when I first started uh, working uh, with stippling, um, I was working on the, tr the traditional canvas, which is one of like the piece back on the back wall back here of Mama Soul. It's on a, a traditional canvas, but I hate the way that it, it gives as I'm stippling. So um, I had to find like something that was more sturdy, and which is why I work more so like on a wood panel or like a, a canvas panel. 
um, because it, it, like I said, it has the give to it. But I hate frames. Um, I feel like um, my love for comics sort of kind of inspired that because like when you read comics, you know, they sort of like break that fourth wall sort of type of thing. So I feel like when you look at some of my pieces like the King piece or um, the balcony piece here, um, like you can kind of sort of like crawl into the painting, so to speak. Like, so I lo like love giving that, like the viewer that sort of feel. So, um, but uh, I felt like these deserve to be uh, framed just because, you know, I didn't want them I, obviously to, to just be unframed and it just, it just d wouldn't, wouldn't do the, the pieces justice. So, you know, just me being an artist, like I know that. So, you know, I, I, I wanted to, to keep that um, traditional sort of feel to that. And, and like I said, just, just sort of make sure that they were represented in the right way. So. Oh, and, and an, another thing, like this is sort of new to me as well, like uh, the framing of the illustrations. Um, these are on a, a die bond, um, which is like a aluminum type of backing, and they have like a bump and a cleat on the back, like so they come ready to hang. And as I was uh, down there um, at the place where I, I get printed, which is called Unfolding Creative in Ferndale, like if you guys ever need some printing done, um, there's a couple, they're named Alan and Amanda. They do some wonderful work. They are wonderful people. Um, and like they did all of my framing for me. So um, like they had a piece hanging on the back wall that was like uh, done like this. And I was like, hey, you know, what is that? And she was like, you know, explain the whole process to me. And I was like, wow, like, you know, I, I think I thought that would be great, you know, to visually for what I was trying to do with my pieces. So, and I think it worked out. I was going to ask, what are your socials in case we wanted to purchase art or just view the work that you are, like, that you put out or you're going to put out? Um, my Instagram is Mark Macon, um, M-A-R-C-M-A-K-I-N-G. Um, and uh, my website is also Um These pieces will be, the illustrations will be up um, in a couple of weeks or so. I'm just trying to figure out some sizing and some some pricing and things like that, but they will be available for purchase. And I will have some other, I do have some other original pieces for purchase as well. But everything on my social is Mark Macon, M-A-R-C-M-A-K-I-N-G. Yeah, and if you can't remember that, there are some cards oh, back yes. at the door, um, little business cards for Marcus so that, that. You, can, you can take one of those. Any other questions? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Mom. Before, <laughs> before your found love at Mott about visual arts and uh, your time at the Yellow House, mm -hmm. <laughs> was there an influence of a relative or a teacher or something that influenced you to get into the arts? Because I thought you were going into basketball. <laughs> Still waiting, right? <laughs> Honestly, uh, like, that's funny that you say that. Um, but no, not anyone in particular. But uh, the sports aspect did have a lot to do with it because, like, um, I mean, you know, I was okay at basketball, but I mean, obviously, I'm not the tallest person. Um, and uh, actually, I wish my 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 it was like a good friend. My best friend was sitting in the back back here. And he's like six seven, and he's actually a basketball player. So I wish he was kind of here to see this, but uh, or to hear this. But uh, when I started actually playing with him, I, that's when I realized that I wasn't that good. <laughs> so, so it like you know I, I started to you know I was like, hey, well I need to figure out you know something else. So I always loved drawing. Um, I always loved comics. Like um, since I was a young kid, like um, you know. I copied the comics, traced them, did all of that good stuff, and like I said, just just always wanted to to do something with art. Like I always wanted to have my art on a billboard somewhere, which I was on a billboard not too long ago, actually, and that was pretty cool. But so you know, I guess I kind of spoke that into existence. So that's another thing. Like you know, speak positive affirmation. 
for yourself, um, you know, and like I said, good things will happen for you, so. Hi. Hi, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what made you choose to go to Mott and just not jump right into a four-year college? Like, what was the decision planning behind that? Ooh, um, mostly, it was uh, the financial aspect of it. A lot of the art schools were very, very expensive. Um, but um, I was supposed to go to the Art Institute in Pittsburgh when I uh, first graduated. But like I said it was, it was really expensive and um, just wasn't really feasible at the time. Um, and when I first started going to MCC, I actually, uh, I was uh, in like an advertise. I was like taking advertising classes because I thought that's what design was at the time. Like I said, I wanted my artwork on a billboard. So I was like, oh, like the best way to do that was like to go into advertising or figure out some kind of way to do that. But um, I think I took, uh, it, was one, it was one class I took here and I wanna, I can't remember exactly who it was with, but um, I was, it was in this building and they noticed that I was pretty good at drawing and it was like, oh, like, why, why, why aren't you, you know, a student at the visual arts? And I was like, what's that, you know? And I didn't even know anything about the visual arts program. Um, so I came over here, came into the building, walked around and just fell in love with everything. You know, it was just everything that I was looking for. And um, so, that's how I fell in love with my. And I'm so jealous, like, that you guys have all of this, like, state-of-the-art new technology, like, all the whiteboard stuff y'all got in there. And, like, we didn't have all of that stuff, you know, back when I was a student, like, to be able to just brainstorm my ideas right on the desk. Like, we would have got killed if Jim would have been <laughs> yelling at us if we'd have been drawing on the table back then. So that's pretty cool that, you know, like, MCC and, and the visual arts program has evolved in the way that it has. So, like I said, you guys are, are very, very fortunate to uh, be a part of this program. It's a wonderful program. So please, please, like, do your best to, like, take advantage of everything that it has to offer. So. I have two, uh, well, one statement. Yes. You're welcome to stop by any time and, you know, walk through the studios and talk to the students and everything. I think it would be great. Well, thank you. I know Tim. you work I a lot, but that. you're always welcome. Thank Unless you. it's during figure drawing, then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? A friend of mine actually, like, told me that I need to start doing that, like, or come be, like, a model for you guys or something, so. <laughs> well, we, we need a male. <laughs> <laughs> I said nothing nothing new, though. Like, we're not here. Yeah, we can't, can't do that. But. Hey, portraits are great, too. We could, yeah, talk but, to them. Yeah, thank uh, you. But uh, two questions that I think would be good you know, for the students just about your process with, especially like, with all of it, but with like the pointillism and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the first thing, um, you said one to two hours a day, mm -hmm. um, at least, you know, I'm sure you have days where you do more and less and whatnot, but um, does that, in your mind, does prep count as work too? So like, you know, it, maybe today you don't really necessarily physically you know, is it all physical art making or is it some of it like looking for imagery, thinking about what you want to do, preparing, you know? Yes, um, because, you know, a lot of the times the images I do find, um, like they may have like some different stuff involved in it that I may not particularly like. So I'll crop it or like I may take some imagery and take it into Photoshop, um, remove some things and like I said, sort of make it my own. Um, like the piece with the young lady here standing next to the two water fountains. Like there was a whole slew of people in uh, that original photo. So I just took those out and I isolated her because I just thought like she was the focal point of the photo, the way she was like looking up into the, the window of the shop that they were standing in front of. And it had a lot of um, unkind, uh, you know, signs and things of that nature outside of the, the shop that they were um, standing in front of. So I just, you know, thought she spoke volumes and, and like I said, just sort of spoke to um, the, the dreaming and the, just like I said, just, just making sure that you know that you're, you know, you're special, so. And then uh, they, they look so clean. Um, do you, I'm sorry, uh, they look very clean. Do mm -hmm. you 
project them? Do you like what? Do you, how do you get them on the surface, and do you build up the tone slowly? What do you? How do you kind of do it? Yep. Um, well, I do use a, a projector and like I kind of project the image, do a light sketch, and then like just kind of like build the tones up in that way. Because portraiture was never really my thing, um, to be completely honest with you. Um, like like there was a. a gentleman here when I uh, worked, when I uh, was a student here, and his name was Kevin. I don't know, you remember Kevin? Tall, big, tall Kevin. He used to hang out with Cassie all the time. Yes, so I, I don't remember his last name, but Kevin was an amazing portrait artist, like would just sit down with a piece of paper, draw you like you were just sitting there, just like right now. And like, I, I, I like envied that so much that I couldn't do that. So, you know, I just had to try to figure out, like, the best way it was for me to come up with, you know, a way to, to get the imagery the way I liked it. And sometimes it doesn't work out. Like, I do have, you know, some portraits that I'm not particularly happy with. You know, the, some proportions be off a little bit. But, you know, all in all, I think, you know, it works out. So you just have to, like I said, do, do what works for you. And I know sometimes, you know, people may say, like, oh, that's cheating or you tracing or whatever. But... I mean, so what? Like, whatever. Like I said, if, if that works for you, you know, and, and you are happy with the results, you know, as long as you're not just copying and pasting somebody else's work, you know, like, do what works best for you. Problem, <coughs> problem solving and process are, are important. You know? Yes, very and much. To me, that's what you just said. <laughs> you know, very you, much you so. You problem solved, and, and, and part of that came through your process. Thank so you. You got to do what works for you. Yes. So I have um, something I want to ask you is you were talking about um, seeing billboard because you did a billboard, didn't you? I did. Didn't you have yeah. a billboard? Yes, I did. Yeah. So you're, you, 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 you've like met that dream. Of I did. That. Do you want to talk about that and maybe how that ties in with self-promotion and the things that you have to do to make yourself relevant and seen as an artist? Um, well, actually, that was... <laughs> It's funny because it wasn't of like actually my idea. Um, good friend of mine, my my love back in the back corner back here. She was uh, gracious enough to surprise me uh, <laughs> with a billboard for my birthday, <laughs> like, and um, had my work on it. Like I said, it, it was just something that was unexpected. Um, but, you know, it, it, it did, like, you know, fulfill that dream of mine, like, to always have my work up on a billboard. Um, but, um, like I said, it, I think it just speaks to when you are good to people and, um, you know, you, you just do good things. People want to do good things for you. Um, they want to highlight you and shine a light on you and I appreciate her for that and uh, yeah it was like up for a long time like I had a, like a billboard contest and everything like I was trying to you know get people to go see it and I was like giving away prints and stuff like that so um <laughs> yeah there was like a whole campaign behind it like I I, I did a billboard contest and um I was actually uh like if you went to my website or like uh, emailed me about where the the billboard was, um, like you were, uh, I was gonna you know give away uh, like a a free code for some different products and different things on my website. So just to kind of attract more uh, foot traffic to my website, just and uh, attract a different um, you know uh, some new audience, a new audience. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so before we wrap things up, parting words of advice for all the students in the audience. Um, again, just be consistent, uh, be passionate about what it is that you're doing. Um, dive into, like if you don't know exactly what that is, dive into a lot of different things. Uh, go exploring, um, visit some galleries, uh, go to a lot of uh, like art shows and, and different things that that are uh, that inspire you like and I mean it might not even be like an art gallery like if you love movies like 
go to, you know, go to movies. Like if you love going, you know, out outdoors, you know, go outdoors. You love taking photos, do that, you know. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, eventually, whatever it is that you're doing, um, you'll you'll find your passion. Um, but just be consistent at it. Um, be kind to people. Um, be respectful. Be professional. Um, and like I said, just don't. Try not to get caught up in, in, in what everybody else is doing because it's easy for us to do that these days. Um, and it's a, a, a great way to deter you from your dreams and what it is you want to do because, you know, you can get discouraged like that. I, I went through a period like that, um, just, you know, being on Instagram a lot and watching other artists who were, you know, doing like a lot of the things I were doing, selling prints, you know, on a constant basis. And I'm just like, man, you know, like, what are they doing that I'm not doing mm -hmm. and different stuff like that. But, you know, it was just I just came to the realization that I needed to stop focusing on that and start focusing more on my work. And these are the results. So this is a great kickstart, you know, to my year. Um, like I said, I'm appreciative of this opportunity. Um, and if you work hard, I feel like, you know, these opportunities will come for you as well. Well, DeMarcus, thank you so much for joining us today, for kicking off this centennial year for us. Thank you so for much coming for home. having me. Thank you. And um, you can see DeMarcus's work on display through February 26th. Um, on March 6th, we'll feature Cheyenne Foreman, one of our other former students who graduated in 2020. So you get to see some of that amazing work. But thank you again, my friend. Thank you. So thank you so much. <laughs>